Back. Uh, let me begin by introducing myself. My name is Dr. Jim Peplosky. I am the Director of Freshman Chemistry here at Clarkson University. I teach the large introductory chemistry course. Uh, I want to thank all of you for staying around today, pushing it till 3 o'clock, uh, putting off your trip home so that you could be here with us to finish off our open house day. Uh, what we are gonna do today is sort of a whirlwind exploration of chemistry as it takes place in the world. Come on in uh, and the society around us and look at some of the fascinating different types of chemistry that occur. Uh, I'm glad to see so many of my normal students that are my uh, current students and previous students sitting in the room now. Uh, that means that some of them may find at least some interest in chemistry. I think we got some seats up along in the back if you want to uh, find out. If you want to sit in the aisles, that's fine as well. I uh, don't have any problem violating the fire codes. That's not a big deal. Uh, so, we're here to talk a little bit about chemistry. I always begin my fall semester class by asking the question, if we're here to study chemistry, what is chemistry? What is the science that we call chemistry? Well, the definition of chemistry is that it is the study of matter. So anything that you can touch, anything you can taste, anything that makes up the materials of the world around us is matter, and the study of that matter is chemistry. So if I choose to study this bench top, <laughs> It's not very interesting. <laughs> chemistry is not just the study of matter, it is the study of matter and the changes that it undergoes. And we call those changes chemical reactions. And so I want to begin by illustrating a couple of chemical reactions for you. Uh, what I want to do here is illustrate a general type of reaction. You'll notice that I put on my safety glasses a general type of reaction called a combustion reaction. So if I apply a flame to the balloon, we get a combustion. Now, if I were to ask the question, and my students have seen this, what was in the balloon? Ah, you gotta be careful, I heard some people say helium. Helium is what you get in the card shop on Valentine's Day filling the balloon that you take to your loved one. If that were helium on Valentine's Day, what you would be bringing them is a bomb. <laughs> I don't know if that is the sentiment that you want to convey. The gas was hydrogen gas, and hydrogen is a combustible reaction. Uh, combustible gas. And so, I always bring a spare just in case we pop one on the way. We might as well get it done now. Let's take another look at the combustion of hydrogen gas. else to the balloon I added oxygen. oxygen the combustion requires oxygen and so in the second case where I concluded included both components together we got a much different effect than the original case where I had a balloon filled solely with hydrogen <laughs> chemistry is not only about studying matter and studying chemical reactions it's about controlling chemical reactions making them work the way we want them to work so that is the science that is chemistry, studying matter and controlling chemical reaction. All right, I'm going to get some of this stuff out of the way here. When I do this, when I do this presentation for schools and other areas uh, of kids, I sometimes refer to it as chemical miracles, magic, and mayhem. The thing that we need to understand, though, is that everything that happens up here happens because I understand the science. I understand the chemistry of the materials that I'm talking about. There's really no such thing as magic. Or is it? 
What did I just do in order to cause that color change inside the bottle? I realized I shook it. What did shaking it do? What did it do? It brought the energy uh, required over the activated complex to form the reaction. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is part of a chemical reaction. Unfortunately, that's not what happened here. Close, though. I mean, that was part of it. You'll notice what's happening. What, what's happening to my color in here? I added something into the mixture when I gave it a shake. What did I add into the mixture other than energy, mechanical energy? Air. Air. Oxygen. And so here I have an example of another reaction requiring oxygen. It's called an oxidation reduction reaction. This one happens to be reversible. As soon as the oxygen is consumed, the color disappears. I much prefer the pink. So all I have to do is shake it, and the pink color will return. Now, this reaction will actually go for, you know, an hour or two. I can do this with different chemicals if I choose to, to get different colors. And if I'm really tricky, I can actually get different colors in the same flask, depending on the amount of oxygen. So if you want to pass those around, you can allow those to... Uh, go throughout the room, let them set for a moment, they'll change back to color, let's give them a shake, supply the oxygen, they will turn once again. Uh, okay, so we're going to continue to look and explore the idea of chemical reactions. That first reaction I did with the hydrogen balloon, with the hydrogen balloon, released a tremendous amount of energy. That's what we call an exothermic reaction. It released energy. You felt that energy as heat. You felt it as a shock wave that went through the room. I want you to try to decide how the energy is released in this reaction. So I'm going to get myself, see if I can get myself set here and not mess too many things up. You're going to do the lights for me, right? I'm going to try to do this without pouring these chemicals all over myself in the dark, which wouldn't be the first time. So I want you to try to decide how the energy is released in this chemical reaction. Yeah, take them off. Lights, camera, action. There we go. That's not as bright as it should be. A little chemiluminescence here. A little hydrogen peroxide react with the materials that come from the materials from our. Oh, that's not good. That's too dim. I think we got a little bit too much peroxide in there. But that probably won't be the first disaster today. Let me add a little bit of color in here. We can change the color. Those. Now, where do you see this type of chemistry taking place? Where do you see this type of chemistry? Glow sticks. Be careful. Some people say neon signs. What happens when you unplug your beer sign? You guys would know. When you <laughs> unplug, if you're not supplying electricity, those were all my students, all the freshmen that answered that question. <laughs> if you're not supplying electricity, you're not going to get the uh, light generation in a neon sign. Here we have a chemical generation of light. The chemical generation of light we see in glow sticks. We also see it in nature in the form of bioluminescence, animals that communicate with light. So fireflies are an example of this type of chemiluminescent. This is what you get in your glow sticks that you buy at the local fair. It's a very interesting, very exciting type of chemistry. There's not a lot of chemical there. There's not a lot of expense. But the chemistry is very uh, interesting, and so we shell out $5 to buy a bunch of necklaces at the fair. Uh, as long as I've got you in the dark, let me ask another question. Here I've got a bottle that contains a solution. I've got a bottle that contains a solution. I'm just going to move this back out of the way. Here I've got a bottle. I've got one simple question to ask. What color is the solution in the bottle? <laughs> Is it red or is it green? Well, the answer is, like most things in this world, it depends on how you look 